Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. I hope everybody hears me well. And then I start with the first slide uh, with the uh, remainder term of the prime number formula. Uh, and uh, we look for the uh, explicit formula. And then uh, we can see it's a, a standard fact that uh, uh, a little heuristic uh, meaning that we will say that an oscillation caused by a zero rho will be x to the beta, so beta is the real part of the zero, divided by the modulus of rho, which is asymptotically the same as x to the beta divided by the modulus of gamma. And so, as I say, uh, that the oscillation is caused by this zero. This is not an exact mathematical uh, definition, but naturally we all understand uh, the meaning of that. And uh, uh, a problem uh, posed by Littlewood uh, more than 80 years ago was uh, to prove an explicit oscillation result for the remainder term, for the modulus of the remainder term. Uh, it is supposed the existence of a hypothetical zero. Uh, so here, uh, the case, the question was uh, that to replace the ineffective fragment Lindell of CRM with an uh, effective uh, result. So we knew already that this oscillation is at least as large as x to the beta minus epsilon, but uh, the epsilon was not. Uh, made precise and uh, what was uh, uh, emphasized by his problem was uh, that the all, this whole uh, oscillation result was ineffective, was ineffective. And uh, this problem was, uh, we can just remark that uh, Littlewood uh, proved uh, already in 1914 uh, that the oscillation of delta x uh, the remainder term in the form psi x minus x is even in both directions a little bit larger than square root of x, namely a three times iterated log factor, uh, log x larger. And here is an error because this should be square root x divided by log x. So that means the same assertion holds for the uh, difference uh, pi x minus li x. Uh, which was uh, the answer for a question uh, of Riemann uh, stated in his memoir or even as a conjecture uh, that he said or he believed that the uh, function leaks uh, gives always an upper estimation for the true number of primes, uh, but little would show that this is not the case. Uh, it has infinitely many uh, positive and infinitely many negative uh, values uh, then extends to infinity to infinity and uh, we see from this formula uh, that actually in the case if the Riemann hypothesis is uh, good is true then we have even a larger oscillation than caused by a single zeros so many zeros just uh, strengthen each other and so he gets the three times iterated logarithm of uh, x and it's strange to remark that uh, this result is still more after more than 100 years, uh, still not improved. So that means we uh, think that uh, the true oscillation is somewhat larger, uh, but uh, we don't have any proof which would go beyond uh, Littlewood's result. Concerning there are numerical uh, results that might be the pi, pi x minus li x. Uh, is uh, at least uh, probably at until 10 to 20 really negative, as Riemann uh, suggested or conjectured it. But we know that there is some sign change uh, below uh, 10 to the 320. Uh, so that means uh, some positive value already. But uh, this will be not the, the uh, actual content of our talk. We will talk just about the, uh, the size of the oscillation, but uh, in contrast, just uh, concerning the oscillation, we will consider both the uh, average value and the uh, maximal value of the oscillation. 
Now, Turan was the first who solved Littlewood's problem in 1950, and uh, he succeeded both to, to give a lower bound for this uh, uh, maximum of delta x, so for this sy function, and uh, it was effective. I will not emphasize that all the uh, results which I will list later will be explicit. So that means C1 row is explicit and uh, C2 is explicit as well. And he gave a function which was a little bit better than just the y to the better not minus uh, y minus uh, epsilon. Uh, Knopowski later proved the same result for the average value of uh, the remainder term of the modulus of the remainder term, also using uh, both verbs use Turan's power sum method. And more specifically, they use the so called second main theorem of Turan's power sum method, which shows uh, that uh, if we have a power sum and we consider concept of power sum normalized in that way that the largest, the modulus of the largest. Uh, uh, number zj is equal to one. Uh, and in this case, we expect that, uh, so to say, the uh, function should be uh, near to uh, one or near to a constant, uh, at least uh, at some places. Now, what uh, Turan could show was that uh, if we take an interval of length n, n is the number of the, the uh, complex numbers uh, that j, then at least one of these values is as large as something little bit uh, uh, smaller than e to the minus n uh, multiplied by uh, this minimum uh, b1 plus bj, uh, which in the case of uh, special case, if all the bj are equal to one, and this special case was used also in this result, then we get that among the uh, uh, n consecutive values of this so-called pure power sum, we get this function, which I said is a little bit smaller than e to the minus n. Now concerning, we don't know how, uh, how, uh, well, how well this approximates the truth, but at least the one, uh, remark that uh, we need at least n consecutive values of this power sum, because if we take just roots of unity, uh, n roots of unity, uh, then we get n minus one consecutive uh, power sums equal to zero. So that means uh, this is truly, uh, surely necessary. And whether uh, the right hand side, this is a big question, how much uh, near is the right hand side to the truth. Now, uh, I succeeded to show uh, using somehow the same machinery, but not exactly uh, any of uh, Turan's theorem, but something uh, about the generalization of Dirichlet's theorem about uh, Diophantine approximation. I could show that the oscillation is really as large as uh, expected after a factor one minus epsilon uh, for a uh, uh, explicit uh, if uh, y is uh, enough large depending on rho naught and epsilon uh, uh, and uh, so to say the, the starting point depends uh, in an effective way from this. Uh, and the proof, as I say, uh, we use Turan's method but not the power sum of Turan but other features of Turan's method. Now, one remark is that uh, if we consider and ask what is the optimal oscillation result, uh, is it true with one, uh, with two minus epsilon, uh, two minus epsilon instead of one minus epsilon? Uh, this is naturally uh, arising the question because uh, with any zero, we have a conjugate zero. So uh, there is a, let's say, a plausible conjecture that it should be as large as two minus epsilon. And this would be really the case if the row not zero would be, let's say, isolated. We don't define exactly what it means, but, but we can feel it up to some extent. But uh, then uh, somewhat later, 
uh, Szilard Rivis could show that this optimal constant is not uh, two minus epsilon, but for a large class of functions, uh, we have pi over two minus epsilon, uh, which means that for some functions, for example, for the zeta function, it can be well that it is two minus epsilon. For example, if the Riemann hypothesis is true, then uh, this constant is even infinity. We have seen little bit's result. So then instead of a constant, we would have uh, basically uh, three times iterated logarithm uh, of x extra. So that means it uh, would be very hard to answer the question uh, for zeta, but definitely for zeta, we can improve it. One can improve it for pi over two minus epsilon. And for a large class of functions, one can improve it to pi half minus epsilon. And for a large class of functions, uh, this is, uh, uh, so that means for many functions or, or for some functions from this large class, this is even optimal. Uh, now, concerning this uh, uh, average and supremum or maximum value, uh, I, I proved uh, improving earlier results of Turan and Knapowski. I proved several uh, results. Also, Schlager proved, showed an improvement. And so, in general, uh, different theorems have different conditions. So we can uh, we can focus on the dependence how large y should be compared to gamma naught, the uh, imaginary part of the zero, then uh, uh, how good is the, the lower bound as a function of y and gamma naught, uh, then the localization of the large values or large average. So not just that, that somewhere between one and y, we have a large value or we have in on the average large values, uh, but, uh, but whether we can uh, localize uh, better these uh, estimates then uh, in general the, the question whether we have an effective or ineffective estimate and i had another method uh, which gave a lower bound which depended on zeta prime of rho naught if rho naught was simple if if it was uh, uh, had a larger multiplicity uh, than uh, analogously something uh, so that that were, had the disadvantage that this was a uh, uh, Quantity which depended, uh, let's say, uh, explicitly on this uh, zero, but uh, we could not uh, give a lower estimate for it, it uh, uh, as a function of the size of the zero. And uh, as I mentioned already, the real difficult case is if uh, uh, rho naught is not on the critical line, that means if uh, uh, Riemann hypothesis is supposed to be false. I mentioned a few of the earlier results. For example, I showed that the average is at least a constant depending on, on gamma naught uh, times y to the beta naught. Uh, now here, this constant is, uh, for example, would be already ineffective. ineffective uh, so that then I have, was not right that everything will be effective later on. Uh, but uh, supposing the Riemann hypothesis, we can really show that the average is uh, an effective constant uh, uh, times square root of pi. And uh, Kramer showed already 100 years ago that it is the opposite inequality is true as well. So uh, our knowledge is today that under the Riemann hypothesis, uh, the average uh, of the remainder term is uh, uh, determined up to a constant uh, and it's square root of pi and the maximum of the function uh, is at least naturally as large as the average, but it can be larger with the log square y, which is again some quantity which was apart from the constant not improved in this last uh, 118 years uh, since uh, Koch. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, an easy consequence of the explicit formula with the upper bound. Uh, so uh, what we will show exactly uh, will be that if we have a uh, given zero of uh, Riemann zeta function and y is so roughly speaking bigger than e to square root of gamma, which means that gamma should be less than let's say log square of y, then we have a lower bound uh, for the uh, average. And here we have 
also a localized average, so this is some advantage of the thing. And also we have here a relatively good lower bound. Uh, so that means something which is relatively uh, near to Y naught. So you might remember for the first result here, we had uh, by at Turan something which is more near to, to uh, Y to better not minus epsilon. And here we have uh, something which is, uh, so to say, more near on the logarithmic scale to y to better not. Now, uh, this can be proved for the different forms of the error terms as well, uh, but we will concentrate in the proofs uh, and for uh, just for this uh, case of psi x minus x, because here we have not a uh, big difference between others. Now, the general strategy is still the same as by Turan, uh, that we consider a weighted mean value, uh, which is uh, in our case now concentrated to some interval near to y, where, where near to y means uh, more exactly that the log on the logarithmic scale. So that means logarithm of a y is near to log y. So on the logarithmic scale, uh, we have, so to say, a y near to y. And uh, so that means this weighted mean value of the error term can be expressed as an integral of uh, the theta function plus some auxiliary functions on the line real part of s equal to two, for example. And this can be transferred into a sum of residues containing the zeros. And the weight is chosen so that only zeros not far from uh, row not should get non negligible weights. And this is the classical treatment of Turan as well by the power sum method. It, by this method, we construct the weight, weight functions uh, with some special properties, uh, which is asymptotically the same for a small group, group means small set of zeta zeros near to row not. Uh, the group can consist perhaps of just the row naught. So this, so to say, uh, plays in some sense the role of the isolated zero. Then the, the residue would be zero. That means there are no residues uh, at a constant distance from the given one. And uh, uh, apart from this small group of uh, uh, specialized zeta zeros. And then, uh, if we are more far than a constant from the original zero, then uh, uh, the, the weight is already negligible. Uh, exactly the way how we will prove it uh, will be as uh, you can see here. So that means here we have a localization for the average instead of delta x, we can work with x to one plus uh, beta naught. Uh, and uh, the lower bound, what we get will be this. And here, so what we have to keep in mind is L is uh, log log y squared. Gamma naught is, uh, that was in the condition, uh, small compared to log y. Lambda is log y and L is log log y. So lambda is log y, L is log log y, and little l is uh, the square root of log log y. So, uh, the first part of the procedure is relatively clear. If we have a zero and near to this zero, we have another one which is somewhat more to the right, then we, uh, we jump to the other zero. And so in this uh, way, we can after at most uh, log y steps, we arrive to a, a zero which has already a, a little bit larger or the same real part as the original one. And the imaginary part is perhaps a little bit larger. Lambda is log of uh, y squared. So it uh, has the same order of magnitude than the original one. So we replace the original zero with rho naught with this rho k. Uh, and uh, in this way, we will have the property that all the zeros which are, are near in height to our given zero are perhaps a little bit uh, with a uh, quantity one over log y to the right from the original zero. So these zeros were called uh, at Turan 
uh, as extreme right hand heroes. Uh, uh, and uh, this is, uh, so to say, a routine procedure to work with such type of heroes. Now, the next step is uh, uh, already different uh, than uh, by Turan. This means we will, uh, instead of uh, having one isolated zero, what we cannot guarantee, we try to reach a small set or small group of zeros, which are very near to each other. And on the other hand, all the other zeros are uh, this uh, uh, large quantity uh, more far uh, from this group than the members of the groups from each other. In order to do this, we will say, uh, we will introduce this definition that two zeros are epsilon connected. If there is a chain of zeros uh, that from one uh, of the, from row to row star, such that each of these zeros have at most epsilon at a distance. And then the procedure is the following, that first we consider uh, those zeros, so we have one extreme right hand zero, this is rho k wave. Then we consider the set of all zeros which are very near to these zeros, and this is defined in that way that uh, they are epsilon one connected with this original zero, and epsilon one is one over log y uh, divided by uh, one over log log y uh, on the tube. So that means in this way, we get already uh, some group of zeros uh, which are near to each other, but we, we cannot, so to say, to distinguish about a group of zeros being very near to each other and saying that all the other zeros are much more far uh, from these zeros uh, than, uh, than the members of the group from each other. So what we do, uh, so first we note that uh, due to the uh, result of Beckland, uh, how many uh, zeros we have between high t and t plus one, we know that this uh, is uh, at most, the quantity is at most log gamma naught and log gamma naught is uh, at most log log y. Uh, due to our uh, supposition at the be beginning. So that means we know that the number of these uh, elements of this group are, is uh, at most log log y. Uh, and we go, then we continue this, uh, uh, this procedure further. So that means uh, inside this uh, uh, set S1, uh, we consider uh, we consider other subsets of zeros which are very close to each other. Uh, here, the very close is that means epsilon two connected, and epsilon two is with a with a factor log log y cubed uh, less than epsilon one, uh, and in this way, uh, in this way, we can. Uh, have several uh, disjoint subsets of this original S11, and we choose among these sub subsets the smallest one, smallest one as the, which has the smallest number of terms. So that means either we have just one, so that either the new subset is, uh, uh, either we have just one uh, subset which is the same as the original set, then we are already uh, contented. Then this set can be considered as a group of, uh, of uh, this uh, small group G of zeros. Or if we have more such subsets, then we choose among them the subset which has the uh, smallest number of elements. In the worst case, that means we have half times as many elements as the original set. And then we continue this procedure further with again uh, uh, epsilon three connected with uh, an epsilon three, which is again with a factor log log y cubed uh, uh, smaller than the original one. And uh, again, we go as long as uh, we get no new subset. So that means uh, when uh, we have already one 
uh, the original set uh, remains the same in the next step as well. And this uh, must happen sooner or later, since uh, if we have in one step, in all steps, at least uh, uh, two new substrates, uh, then we see that uh, this whole thing must stop in uh, uh, log uh, S1 divided by log two steps. So that means log L divided by log two. So that means in altogether log log y steps, uh, this procedure has to uh, be finished. And once it's finished, uh, then we reached in some sense already our goal. So we are in a situation the same as an isolated zero, just instead of one isolated zero, we have a small group of zeros which are very near to each other. So they behave uh, like a zero with a large multiplicity and all the other zeros are uh, with, a, uh, power, with a power of log log y, a larger distance from uh, the elements of this group, a group than uh, these from itself. So we, uh, we will call this small uh, set of zeros R and uh, that means that within R, the distances one over log y divided by a power of log log y uh, 3m plus 2, but outside uh, this r, all the other zeros are with, a, uh, with a, the second power with the square of log log y uh, more far from all the elements of the original set. So in this way, uh, we get. Uh, finally uh, a suitable subdivision of the zeros to exclude this uh, interference of the zeros and uh, this means that uh, we have we will have still uh, that uh, the uh, new zero will be uh, nearly as large in the real part of this new zero will be nearly as large as the original one, the height is uh, just a constant uh, times larger. And again, right of this uh, uh, small group of zeros, we have, uh, so right means uh, if we are at least two over log y, uh, more right from these zeros, uh, then uh, we have already a zero pre-region. Uh, so that means we arrived uh, in some sense uh, to a, a situation like uh, Turan, but uh, our, as we will see, our power sum will be in some sense trivial. Uh, some, uh, the largest uh, elements will be equal to each other, and uh, then uh, the other elements will be zero exactly, and then uh, a little bit more far, uh, we will have already just a negligible effect for all other zeros. So we in order to reach this goal, we define a polynomial. Perhaps this form is, is better to see. Uh, so this means that uh, uh, here rho dash uh, runs through those zeros, which are in the distance at, at uh, most five, so a constant from the original zero. Five has no important meeting. I mean, it has to be. Uh, at least something three, four, uh, but uh, any constant would do here. And so for those zeros, which are at most a constant distance from our given zero uh, row one, uh, and are not elements of this small group of zeros, which are very near to each other, uh, this function for these uh, uh, row prime, we define this function here. And then the property will be that if we consider, it turns out that, that in the expression, uh, not uh, the row comes, but the distance row minus row one uh, plays a role, important role. And then uh, the P, P of row uh, at the place is row minus row not uh, will be equal to zero if row is not element of these small groups. And on the other hand, is a distance at most. Five. So that means those zeros will not count at all, as you will see later. The polynomial will be for all these zero, all the zeros 
which are in this special group or special set uh, being very near to our original row one will be asymptotically equal to one. So that means what I said that the larger terms of this uh, power sum will be all equal to one. And we can easily, uh, if we use the, the uh, procedure and the, the estimates what we gave for these uh, zeros uh, here, then uh, we can easily estimate uh, the size of this polynomial, which is uh, e to the L in general, if S is large, if S is uh, not, how to say, less than two times log, log Y, and it is uh, S to the L, uh, if the modulus of S is bigger than two. So that means that we have a control over the size of this function PS. And then we can define the weighted mean value of delta X in that way that uh, this original delta, delta X over X to one plus instead of beta, we work this row one. And then we attach to this a multiplicative weight, which is defined by this Mellin transform here. And uh, our uh, function, what we choose here, will be this well-known function raised on the power log log y. And this will take care uh, to have the zeros at a distance at least phi uh, to have uh, a small effect. Then this function here will take care that if the zeros are, are already as far as square root log y or a little bit more than square root of log y uh, from the original zero, then this should kill everything. And we have a, a factor PS, this polynomial, uh, on which, which is, uh, so to say, uh, which will grow if S grows. But on the other hand, these two factors will, so to say, uh, will balance the effect of PS. Because uh, as I said in this last slide, this formula assures us, guarantees us, that PS should uh, uh, grow just uh, moderate, moderately. I mean, you see uh, modulus of S, S to the power L, E to the power L. And so uh, this uh, GS will be, and first will be an anti-function. So we can move uh, uh, the integration uh, and uh, in order to evaluate this weight function. And uh, the GS function will, will uh, be very small if uh, the imaginary part of S tends to infinity. Uh, if we want to control the size of this weight function W, then uh, moving the line of integration, it's relatively easy to show that uh, if A is uh, large, then uh, the first term will be here small. If E is uh, small, so I mean much less than one, then the last term here will be small. So the minimum will be small. And so that means uh, uh, in some sense, uh, uh, this E to L will be the maximum size of this WA, roughly speaking. And not, not exactly. Uh, and uh, uh, if we are, so to say, uh, this A on the logarithmic scale far from zero, so if, if A is uh, much smaller than one or much larger than one, uh, then we have uh, negligible weight for this base function. And in order to show it, it's, it's quite a, a routine work. Uh, I mean, if we know the exact form of the function, then these two function, uh, this is the, uh, uh, we can evaluate easily. And for the polynomial, we had already given the size of the polynomial. So it's an easy task to calculate uh, these integrals, both on the line sigma equal zero. This gives the, the, uh, second term here. On the other hand, we have the option to work 
for small values of a, that means if a is much smaller than one, a positive, it has to be a positive value because a is equal to y divided by x. So if a is much smaller than y, than one, then we move the line to the right. And then if we evaluate this thing here, we will see that we will get here an a to the power lambda, and this will be uh, already dominating this whole expression uh, if a is much larger than, if, if a is smaller than one over uh, e to the L. And this is why we get uh, in our original theorem, we get always, uh, as you see here, the lower bound is e to the minus L and the localization from the distance on the logarithmic scale from y is equal to l as well. So this is the way how we get uh, the distance l, both in the lower estimation and both in the localization. And if we move the line to the, uh, to the real line sigma equal minus lambda, then we get for large values of a, large means larger or much larger than e to the lambda, e to the l, so L is log log y squared. And then we get again uh, the other term uh, in this uh, minimum. So that means uh, actually this evaluation already shows us uh, that uh, we will have, uh, we, will, we can localize the uh, values of the weighted mean value of delta x uh, depending uh, on the uh, exact value of, uh, of uh, uh, y over x, and so to say, depending on our already given choice of uh, little l, small l, which is log of y squared. Now, uh, the rest is again more similar to Turan's uh, method, Turan's uh, scheme of. Uh, uh, showing these oscillation theorems until we arrive to the to the so-called power sum, uh, which will be different uh, than by Tura. Now, if we take a look on this, uh, then again, our estimation of the weight function guarantees for us that we have here uh, a negligible weight for the uh, values of the remainder term which are smaller than y times e to minus l. And we have, we have, uh, we have similarly a negligible weight if we have uh, a value of x, which is larger than y with a factor e to 2l, where again, I emphasize that little l is log log y squared. So this shows two things that basically this average uy is uh, can be estimated from above from an average of delta x which is only uh, sensible for the values between y times e to minus 2l and y times e to 2l and the a factor of uh, what we lose by this procedure which is e to log log y squared and this will appear in the final uh, result of, of uh, our, so in the final theorem. So that means uh, in that way, uh, if we can estimate from below the uy as a function of y and rho naught, then we will get uh, an estimate uh, of the average of delta x, uh, taking into account that this x to one plus beta one is completely, uh, so to say, uh, transparently behaving in this given interval. Uh, so that means now uh, we will use the identity which connects the zeta function and the remainder term. This is uh, by partial integration, so to say, very standard. And then if we, we write in the definition of the weight function, then the definition of the weight function is exactly like this. The second step is again standard. We 
interchange the two integration. And so we arrived that we could express the original weighted mean value of the remainder term. We could express as an integral of the uh, zeta prime divided by zeta. And here we have a function gs, which uh, uh, is formed from two uh, well-known functions. Uh, and the third one is our polynomial. So this is the gs, which appears in our expression of the integral. And uh, so that means if we want to calculate uh, this uh, integral, the, uh, the mean value of the remainder term uh, through this complex formula, then we get a power sum where we have, so to say, this is not interesting. This is the only interesting part, naturally. And so then that means we have this function here. Uh, and we have to control, uh, we have to check whether this is really easier uh, manageable and easier uh, to be estimated from below than in the case of Turan. Now, uh, there are two remarks that if we are already uh, at a distance, at least log y from the original, uh, la, let's say the dominant zero uh, row one, then uh, our dominant term is here that this function will uh, kill everything. And so uh, we, if we are at a distance, at least two times log y away from our dominant zero, then this is really negligible. Then the second step uh, is if, the, if we consider the zeros, which are at a distance between five and two times log y, uh, uh, the, the, the distance from the uh, original zero, I mean, not original, but from the chosen zero, uh, is between five and two times lambda, then the G function is actually zero. So in that case, uh, no, no, excuse me. In this case, it is, uh, it is the function e to the s plus e to minus s divided by two s to the power L. Then this function kills now everything. And so in this way, uh, we can again neglect uh, this set of zeros here. And uh, naturally, if, so to say here, we could increase the bound to five, as I said, but we could not decrease it below three or four or something like, or below E plus one over E naturally. Uh, but uh, that means uh, uh, we have the second uh, set of zeros for which this uh, uh, infinite power sum is negligible. Then the third set of zeros, which can be actually quite near to the original zeros, but which don't belong to this uh, very small set of, uh, so to say, zeros, chosen zeros R, set R, uh, which are very near to the gamma one. And uh, for those zeros, we have actually no residue. So that means this uh, G function is zero because we constructed our polynomial in that way that the uh, polynomial should be zero if the uh, chosen row is not in this set of uh, zeros being very near to the row one. And on the other hand, uh, if the zeros are at most at a distance five from it. Uh, and so that means this set of zeros, which otherwise should cause, so to say, uh, quite a big, big uh, loss at Turan's method. For this set of zeros, we have just zero, uh, the residue, or, or we have no residues at all. And uh, then there is, uh, the rest is those set of zeros, which are very, very near to row one, these are rho equal an element of R, which I say uh, uh, can be considered as 
uh, the same as the original uh, zero row one because the G function is uh, asymptotically one for these zeros, uh, again, due to the definition of our polynomial and due to the definition uh, of the other weight function uh, here, apart from PS. So that means uh, these functions are also asymptotically equal to one if we are so near to our chosen zero row one. So that means this whole uh, whole sum which appears in our power sum uh, is then idea one uh, for a uh, uh, few times, which are uh, in some sense uh, very near to our chosen zero row one. So in, in this set, special set R, or otherwise they are uh, in, uh, so to say, three steps we showed that they are either zero or a uh, little bit less negligible or very much negligible. And this means that we can uh, not only estimate from below, excuse me, uh, but uh, we, can, we can even asymptotically evaluate our, uh, I call it a power sum, but uh, the expression is not, uh, uh, not so much, uh, uh, well, uh, so to say, chosen for, for this uh, uh, function here. So that means for the element of this sum here, uh, every element is uh, the same asymptotically equal to row one. The number of elements is uh, at least one. It can be more as well. Uh, but uh, therefore, we get for this u, the uy can be even as uh, uh, evaluated asymptotically. Uh, and it is uh, this uh, thing r divided by rho one. And so it is definitely, uh, if we take into account all the errors here, is definitely one over two times rho one. This means it's a uh, uh, relatively negligible one over log log y square. And uh, this means that uh, the weighted mean value is uh, estimated as as basically uh, one over uh, two times uh, one over log log y squared. And this means that we get really uh, for this quantity, which was uh, appearing in our detailed theorem, uh, for this quantity, we will get the lower bound, basically one over e to the L, or to be completely exact, uh, we get the inequality stated here that this mean value will be at least e to the minus five over four times L. And this finishes uh, the proof of uh, our CRM, uh, which was just uh, in a, not in such a symmetrical way uh, defined, but uh, it was, and uh, X to one plus beta naught is given here. And so uh, altogether we proved uh, our CRM uh, in this, this way. And then uh, I finish it and thank you for the attention. And I'm naturally ready to answer any questions.